plug into your senses in the first ever all-electric Genesis GV60. Drive into the future of electrified mobility at Garvey Genesis. All electric, all luxury. Watching Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, and it rolls on from the 2022 ESPN Events Invitational from the Walt Disney World Resort in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Today, the first of two semifinals, the Ole Miss Rebels taking on the upset-minded Siena Saints. Siena pulled the upset over Florida State in the first quarterfinal yesterday. They never trailed in that game and won it going away by 17. The Rebs, they never trailed against Stanford. They won their quarterfinal matchup by four. From inside the State Farm Fieldhouse, on the grounds of the Disney Wide World of Sports, I'm Rich Hollenberg alongside Chris Spatola. Chris, Kermit Davis's crew, led by a fabulous freshman yesterday by the name of Amari Abram. Yeah, the guards on both of these teams, Rich, showed out yesterday. And, and for Ole Miss, it did start with Abram, the talented freshman from Port Arthur, Texas. Really scored the basketball. That's what he does. He's playing the point, but he is a scoring guard and did it from all over. Had a terrific first half, carried them offensively with Matthew Morell not having a great half. And man, he really did it throughout. What a what a coming out party for him. And then JV and McCollum and Andrew Playtech for Siena. Playtech, seven of nine from the field. He had five threes, 20 points in a game, a career high for him. And a lot of those passes, dimes from J.J. McCollum, who had a career high, eight assists. That backcourt's going to have to be good today. Uh, but, but both teams, Rich, guard play was fantastic. Yeah, and you mentioned the career high, eight assists for McCollum. It was a career day for a couple of those players you mentioned. Amari Abram went off for 26 points. That's the most in his young career in Oxford and the most of anybody here at this Invitational. Andrew Playtech, a new career high with 20 points on the shoulders of five three-pointers. And again, 18 points and those eight dimes by Javen McCollum. Sienna's going to be wearing their yellow unis today, and it's the white unis for Kermit Davis's Ole Miss Rebels. Kermit turning 63 years young in a couple of weeks on December 14th. Nine-time Coach of the Year, one of three active head coaches to win a Coach of the Year award in four different conferences. He did it with the Big Sky at Idaho, did it in the Sun Belt and the Conference USA, and of course won it a couple years ago with the Ole Miss Rebels in the SEC. It's the first ever meeting between Siena and Ole Miss, and the Rebels are 5-0 to start a season for the first time in nine years. For Carmen Massarello, the 44-year-old Siena grad, he's back at his old stopping grounds in his fourth year with the Saints, and they had their first win against a high major team in eight years, their first win against an ACC team yesterday in Florida State in a dozen years. Ole Miss controls the opening tip in those white uniforms. Here's Amari Abram, one in white. Jamie Brakefield also had a good quarterfinal matchup. Ooh, five on the shot clock. And an offensive rebound, something few do better than the Ole Miss Rebels. Yeah, Carmen Massarello telling us before the game, we're going to have to rebound, defensive rebound, like our life depends on it. Ole Miss, 16 offensive rebounds a game, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. Javon McCollum gets the Saints off to a good start, just like he did yesterday. He's playing so confidently. What a jump he's made from his freshman to sophomore year. He went after Florida State's guards yesterday. He's not big. He's only about six feet, 160 pounds, but he is really confident. And a Sunshine State native, McCollum from nearby Fort Myers, Florida, has a big fan contingent here. Saints traveled well for this tournament. Here's Jace Johnson. And McCollum, number two in yellow. He's joined by Jared Billups in the backcourt. Billups will most likely get the assignment of guarding Matthew Morell for Ole Miss. A lockdown defender. And there's Andrew Playtech's first two and a quick timeout called by Kermit Davis. This is a mirror image of what happened with Siena yesterday against FSU. Off to a quick five-zip start.
A set play to get Andrew Playtech a shot, and it's a two. He does a nice job curling off of this. And the one thing about Ole Miss's defense, they don't have that rim-protecting shot blocker. You know, it's it's a physical, athletic team, but not real big up front. And right down Broadway for Playtech on that set. There's Javius McKinnis. He had his best game as a Rebel yesterday. Morrell misses his first shot attempt. He was held to just six points yesterday. Leading scorer for the Rebels. Playtech, three in and out. Playtech has shot it so well, you're, you're shocked when he misses. Breakfield had 17 points, eight rebounds against the Stanford Cardinal yesterday. Ten on the shot clock. They go inside to McKinnis. Hands it back to Morrell. Tough take. Offensive rebound again, and Brakefield cashes it in. Jamin Brakefield, the transfer from Duke, has played well for them. I think he's an X-factor for Ole Miss this year. He's really skilled. He plays that four position. Good ball movement by the Saints. Leaves a wide open look, but Jace Johnson can't pay it off. And that's Stormos first. You know, Brakefield had 17 and 8 yesterday. He played really well. And I think a guy, he's super skilled. You know, I think sometimes his walk to goes in and out of games, but he's he does a nice job around the rim. You see them, he's active on the glass, can shoot it from three. Good face-up player. TJ Caldwell for sub on the floor for Kermit Davis. And he nearly turned it over twice. Number two in white. Ten to shoot for the Reds. Here's Miles Burns. Way off the mark. And another offensive rebound by the Ole Miss Rebels. And that ball goes out of bounds in front of the Siena bench. They wanted it to be a turnover, but not to be had. You know, this is one of those games, if you're Sienna Rich, where your guards have to be active on the defensive glass. They have to get in there. The front court of Sienna is not going to be able to do this on their own. And you want to run if you're Sienna, but you've got to secure the basketball first. You've got to finish the possession. Morrell, another tough take comes up empty. And another offensive rebound by Javius McKinnis, but it goes over the half court line, and that's an Ole Miss turnover. Ole Miss starting off one for eight from the field. Well, Kermit Davis, Chris, brought in four transfers who had all won Defensive Player of the Year awards at their previous schools. What does he like to do defensively? Well, he's, this is a Kermit team. I mean, he's had players like this, you know, rugged, tough, you know, get after it defensively types of teams. That's where Amari Abram came up so big yesterday because they're at times they have struggled to score, especially if Matthew Morrell's not making shots. Stormo comes up short with the jump hook. Matthew Morrell joins us here at the broadcast table. And we talked about those defensive accolades. Obviously, Kermit Davis saw a shortcoming in last year's team. His worst outing as the head coach for the Ole Miss Rebels said they brought in four dudes who are defensive stalwarts. Now the question is, does that translate to a Power 5 type program? Nice backdoor look. Playtech just tosses it up and airballs it. McKinnis inside to Brakefield. And Brakefield with some bully ball. On his good early post, and he got really deep position. You know, there's the versatility of Brakefield. He could do it all over the floor. Stormo looking for the cutter, but it's picked off by Burns. Miles Burns led all of college basketball last year in steals. And there's another shot by Brakefield. Turnover. Turnovers have been an issue for Siena. They're averaging 16 a game. They had 19 yesterday against Florida State. 
You know, Florida State, uh, not, not a lot of resistance so far this year. You cannot turn it over at that rate against Ole Miss today. Well, five minutes into this game, Chris Patola, it's Jamin Brakefield six and Sienna five. They go inside out as they like to do at Sienna, and they get a fresh 20. Deep three by McCollum off the mark, and Brakefield's got it for the Rebels. We talked about their defense. What does Ole Miss like to do offensively, Chris? Well, they, a lot of cutting, you know, they'll, a lot of high ball screen, wing ball screen stuff. And then, you know, ultimately you're trying to find Morrell, who's been blanketed, obviously. Seven to shoot, break field, lefty J from the baseline off the mark that time. McCollum in transition, calls his own number. Smooth as silk, JV and McCollum. You know, he did not play well in their game against Harvard two games ago, a game they lost. He only took four sh shots in that game at six turnovers. You could tell he came to Orlando ready to play, and he has been dynamic. Bounce pass, McKinnis. We saw him flush a couple yesterday in his best day as a Rebel at 15-5 and five against Stanford. Now has his first two today against Siena. And that's what you see a lot from Ole Miss. You know, McKinnis has done a nice job, high ball screen, rim running, and he's a very physical, athletic finisher. Here's Jared Billups, number one in yellow. Gives it to Stormo, two feet in the paint. He turns around and had it stripped. Now Burns. Wow. And a traveling violation called on Miles Burns with 13.08 to go. Javius McKinnis, the transfer from Jackson State, had himself a day yesterday. He was 5 of 7 at the rim against Stanford. Helps when you go high percentage with the flush. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dollar General. Save time, save money, every day. The holidays are here and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrapped savings for your next Chevy. Get year-end savings now. Silverado, just $4.39 a month. Yes, $4.39 a month. So come join the family and thank DePaula for great year-end savings. Help your teen have a more positive online experience with Instagram's tools, like supervision tools on Family Center, which help parents see who their teen follows and who follows them. Daily time limits, which lets parents limit their teen's time on Instagram once supervision is set up. And sensitive content control, which by default sets new teens' accounts to see less sensitive content. Explore over 30 tools that can help teens have a positive experience on Instagram. Seems fine to me. Yeah, exactly. Dad, right. how big is the ocean? Let me call you back. That is a really good question. You ready? Adventure awaits in the ruggedly luxurious Genesis GV80. Get yours at Garvey Genesis. Kermit Davis and his Ole Miss Rebels are up one with 13.08 to go in this first semifinal from the ESPN Events Invitational. And let's face it, not much expected of these Ole Miss Rebels as far as the SEC preseason poll goes. They were number nine in the preseason to start this season as we welcome you back inside the State Farm Fieldhouse. Hope you're having a great, happy Thanksgiving weekend alongside Chris Patola. I'm Rich Hollenberg. We have seen an Ole Miss team that looks a lot better than that number nine ranking. Yeah, we have. And, I, you know, look, I think in this day and age with transfers, you didn't know what you were getting. I mean, we with Ole Miss in terms of the transfers they added up front, one of the things you knew you were getting was Matthew Morrell. Really explosive scorer, really terrific three-point shooter. Has not played well here in Orlando. And, and you understand why. I mean, teams are running him off the three-point line. They're making it very diffi difficult for him to catch. And it's been that, that way early in this game. But I like their team, Rich. I, I think they're going to be much better than they were predicted to be. I think this fits the Kermit Davis mold. They're tough. They're physical. They're athletic. 
They can defend, and they're very good on the offensive glass. And you can look at it both ways, right? Glass half, glass half empty, glass half full. Morrell has struggled, and yet they're in the semifinals. Of course, Kermit Davis would like it if Matthew Morrell scored 18 like he's been doing so far this season. He forced a turnover there. He could play on the defensive end as well. Pulls up, in and out. The seal is still on the basket for Matthew Morrell so far. Here's a breakaway for Caldwell. Hangs, can't hit. Offensive rebound, James White. Sienna has been so careless with the basketball. You've got to be a lot more physical offensively, a lot more secure with the ball. I mean, they're leading the runouts. It's already the fifth offensive rebound for the Ole Miss Rebels. They came into this invitational eighth in the country in that category. And an offensive foul called on freshman Michael Ely, number three in yellow. And that's going to go down as another turnover. I mean, that's five turnovers to start this game and a nice shot fake. And that's a really good defensive play. I mean, he waited there for a count of two before he took it. And what did Coach Massarella tell us just moments before this tip? Their goal, 11 turnovers or fewer. They're already halfway there. You talk about those O rebounding numbers. Ole Miss has moved up to sixth in the country. Alabama the best in the country. And they had a big win last night against Michigan State. Five on the shot clock from close range. That's Theo Akuba with his first two. Ole Miss has a rotating cast of bigs, and Kermit Davis kind of goes with the guy who's playing well. It was Javius McKinnis yesterday. Akuba, another one, another one of those bigs. And another unforced error by the Siena Saints. Turnover number six for the upstart members of the MAC. They trail by five with 11.21 to go. Ole Miss in the driver's seat. The holidays are here and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrapped savings for your next Chevy. Get year-end savings now. Silverado just $4.39 a month. Yes, $4.39 a month. So come join the family and thank DePaula for great year-end savings. Seems fine to me. Yeah. Exactly. Dad, right. how big is the ocean? Let me call you back. That is a really good question. You ready? Adventure awaits in the ruggedly luxurious Genesis GV80. Get yours at Garvey Genesis. Family Centric helps parents have conversations with their teens about safety on social media. Explore more than 30 tools that can help teens have a positive experience on Instagram. Turnovers have been a problem for Siena on this season. They were yesterday. They had 19 against Florida State, but their margin for error was larger because Florida State's not a good team right now. But against Ole Miss, you, you can't cough the ball up to them. I mean, they, they've led to runouts in this game. And it's an Ole Miss team that if you, I mean, that's just a one-handed pass to nobody. And so, you know, you, you lead, you, you give Ole Miss those turnovers, Rich, and you allow a team that's not been great offensively to get some cheap stuff. And, and for Siena, they could afford that yesterday. You can't afford that today against Ole Miss. Siena, five straight turnovers, and that has been a key to this Ole Miss 12-2 run that they are currently on. Six points off turnovers for the Ole Miss Rebels as well. Now some full court pressure by the Saints. Don't see this too often. Just trying to change things up a little bit. Change the mojo in the building. And we've got a foul away from the ball. Your officials today, Doug Sermons, A.J. Desai, and Vlad Tadal. Doug Sermons was almost disgusted yeah. by the hold there. <laughs> he was part coach, part official. <laughs> he looked at him like, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's going to be a foul on James White. 
and Ole Miss turnover. Here's this 1-3-1 trap of Kermit Davis staple. And it's been problematic for Sienna so far. How do you solve that? Well, you gotta, you gotta move the ball like they've done and you've got to attack the back end, you know, from those corners. I mean, that's a good look there for Stormo. You just go, got to go stronger. There's a second straight Ole Miss turnover on their end. See if McCollum and company could cash it in. That one's blocked. White has it blocked on the other end, but he's called for an offensive foul. That's two quick fouls on number five and white, James White. You know, the other thing, too, is, you know, Andrew Playtech. Sienna plays a lot of guys. You know, one of the other thing against that 1-3-1 is to have shooters. You know, you beat the trap, and you want to come opposite. Now Kelly are trapped. Ten to shoot. They go for a lob. Ely forced to turn around. A tuck two. And it's rebounded by Ty Fagan. Halfway through this first half of the first semifinal from the ESPN Events Invitational. And that's another turnover. Ever since that last time out, the Ole Miss offense has gotten a little off kilter. The winner of this game will face the winner of Oklahoma and Seton Hall in the ESPN Events Invitational Championship game. That's coming up on Sunday after a day off at Disney World. Seton Hall winning on a buzzer beating three. And now Ole Miss and a man, so Kermit Davis just changing up the looks. Here's McCollum. Bounce pass, Stormo. And a nice job by McCollum attacking off that ball screen and then Stormo just following the play and it was not an easy catch. White. A little one-on-one -on -one from James White. He has an early four. Stormo, again, doing work in the paint. Jackson Stormo, really skilled. You know, he's got very good footwork inside. Was in foul trouble yesterday, so only played about half the game. But they love to play through him. Very good passer and a good low block score. Grab transfer from Pepperdine, number 15 in yellow, and he grabs the rebound on cue. Here's Bear in the open court. Haven't heard anything yet from Jared Billups, number one in yellow. McCollum, bounce pass, Stormo, again. Eight assists yesterday for Javion McCollum, and he breaks down your defense when he gets into the paint. He creates for others. You've got to try to keep him in front. He's really a shifty guard who's got a lot of freedom in their offense. 12 minutes gone by, five points, three dimes already for Javion McCollum. And there's some good defense from the Saints. Looking to reclaim the lead. Stormo again! Three straight buckets by the big man. Jackson Stormo puts the Siena Saints on top by one. Siena in the midst of an 8-2 run. I think they had too many guys come on the court. Yeah. They uh, After the, this Jackson Stormo dunk, I think the bench erupted, thought maybe there was going to be a timeout, and you 
Doug Sermon's had to call out this guy. They call him fresh, JV McCollum. He's so fresh and so clean, clean. What a dime. The holidays are here, and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrapped savings for your next. Family Centric helps parents have conversations with their teens about safety on social media. Explore more than 30 tools that can help teens have a positive experience on Instagram. Alongside Chris Patola, Rich Hollenberg, it's been the Jackson Stormo show as of late. It has, you know, and he, he's really one of the best bigs in the MAC. Uh, really skilled inside. He's just a, a hardworking guy who's, uh, as you mentioned, Rich, the grad transfer from Pepperdine. And this was a technical foul. They were still in play. And Jace Johnson decides he's going to kind of wander out on the floor. I think he thought that Ole Miss was going to call a timeout. And as Doug Sermons came over and told us, it's a Class B technical foul for too many guys on the floor. It was right. actually Jordan Kelly. Or yeah. Well, following the letter of the law, Doug Sermons is right. <laughs> there's, there's nothing you can do. It's like, jeez. <laughs> a little over-exuberance by the Siena Saints. And we've seen some mid-major schools come down here to the wide world of sports yeah. and pull off some upsets. Last year, remember, Dayton beat Kansas in an epic game. We've seen Dayton win this tournament a couple of times. Siena Saints looking for back-to-back -back wins against Power 5 schools. They're up by one right now with 7.37 to go. So Matthew Morrell will shoot the technical free throw. Again, just two for eight for Morrell yesterday against Stanford, six points. He's got his first here. With 12 and a half minutes gone by. Now Ole Miss with the basketball after the Class B technical. Here's Morrell. McKinnis working on Stormo. Over his shoulder, no good. And Coach Massarello was saying he was pushed. And the officials agree. But that's an example, Rich, of your guards coming down to rebound. That's a really good rebound by Jared Billups. I mean, he's in there and certainly looks like he got pushed. There's a tip ball. Phillips got it. Playtech was wide open on the left wing. Instead, it's McCollum. Got it! In front of the Ole Miss bench. Tough shot maker. Mom and dad in the crowd, along with the rest of the Siena faithful who have made their way down from Loudonville. And they're getting loud inside the State Farm Fieldhouse. Saints on a 10-3 run the last five minutes. And what a bucket by T.J. Caldwell. He hangs and hits for the N1 opportunity. You know, Ole Miss playing without Deshaun Ruffin, one of the best guards in the SEC. They've got two freshman guards who've had to step in. T.J. Caldwell, one of them. Of course, Amari Abram, the other. Caldwell, an ESPN Top 100 recruit from Dallas, Texas. And what a finish there. Both those guys really scoring guards. Caldwell caps the three-point play to give Ole Miss the lead by one. There's Deshaun in his sweats. They're expecting him back next Saturday against Memphis. Ten on the shot clock. One on one, McCollum in and out. Here's Caldwell guarded by Playtech. Morrell, deep three. And every one of them has looked good and is Touched rim at least. That one in and out again for Matthew Morrell. Stolen. Burns. Step 
through. And a wild shot at the rim. And Miles Burns missed both. Morrell saved it for a fresh 20 for the Rebels. Wow. Looked like it was going to be an easy two for Ole Miss. Uh, it was anything but easy. But uh, it was a good decision to pull the ball back out and set something up. Caldwell with the spin to his left. No. And it's grabbed by Killian Gribben, who was an unsung hero yesterday in this Siena win against Florida State. Nine points and three rebounds after going scoreless in the first four games of his Siena career. McCollum just wants to take this game over. Here's Billups, and he's got it. Well, there's, their spacing is so good. They play four around, around one, and when Ole Miss is in a man, the 1-3-1's one, one, giving them problems, but off of misses, Ole Miss coming back in a man, and that's when JV and McCollum goes to work, and he's getting a matchup. You know, Ole Miss switching those ball screens, and when you have that spacing, Rich, McCollum could get into that lane, and you're spacing shooters around him. Again, here's that ball screen. They switch it. And McKinnis just can't stay in front, and then good help coming over. But when you do bring that help, that's when those shooters on the opposite side can space and fire. And another assist for McCollum. Well, heads up to the rest of the Mac. This is one of, if not the most dynamic backcourts in all of mid-major basketball. JV and McCollum already with seven points and five assists. And his last assist to his backcourt mate, Jared Billups, a distant cousin of Chauncey Billups. And it's a homecoming of sorts for number two in yellow. From the ESPN Wide World of Sports to his home in Fort Myers, Florida, about a two-hour drive, 145 miles. Of course, that's just a little bit shorter than it is up to central New York near Albany, where Siena's located. And there's the, the McCollum crew making their presence felt inside the State Farm Fieldhouse. Here's Morrell again, finally sees a three-pointer go down. He is streaky. He's a really cocky shooter, though. He's going to keep shooting it, and if you... He's had space. You know, that's the thing. He has had space and time to get it off. McCollum inside. They go back out. Ribbon had a layup. And Ely pays it off with a triple. You know, it's all starting with J.B. McCollum getting all this in a rotation. Robert Allen with his first two. Another homecoming of sorts for Allen. He lived just 15 minutes from Disney World. Coming out of Orlando and Edgewater High School. Good game so far in this first semifinal. A one-point Ole Miss lead. And their defense has really bared their teeth. Almost another turnover forced by that Rebels defense. Johnson wildly to the rim. Two follows and still nothing. And the foul's going to go on Jace Johnson. Well, the three balls starting to fall here in the semifinals. It, it is, yeah. What a, what a competitive half it's been. Matthew Morrell, nice little down screen to get him loose. One of the best shooters in the SEC. And then Michael Ely off of that JV and McCollum penetration. He's wet. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. The holidays are here and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrapped savings for your next Chevy. Get year-end savings now. Silverado just $4.39 a month. Yes, $4.39 a month. So come join the family and thank DePaula for great year-end savings. Help your teen have a more positive online experience with Instagram's tools, like supervision tools on Family Center, which help parents see who their teen follows and who follows them. Daily Time Limits, which lets parents limit their teen's time on Instagram once supervision is set up. And Sensitive Content Control, 
which by default sets new teens' accounts to see less sensitive content. Explore over 30 tools that can help teens have a positive experience on Instagram. Seems fine to me. Yeah, exactly. Dad, right. how big is the ocean? Let me call you back. That is a really good question. Adventure awaits in the ruggedly luxurious Genesis GV80. Get yours at Garvey Genesis. Well, a stone's throw from downtown Orlando, Florida. We are in the happiest place on earth, Walt Disney World. But there's a lot of championship basketball being played in the great Northwest. The Phil Knight Invitational women's bracket will pit North Carolina ranked eighth against fifth ranked Iowa State. That game coming up on Sunday. And on the men's side, it's just as strong. Number one, North Carolina advancing. They'll take on Iowa State in the semifinals. Who had an overtime win against Villanova. And a top 20 matchup between UConn and Alabama follows that on ESPN. Those are the semifinals of the PKI, as the kids call it. When you say this is the happiest place on earth, yeah. is that self-proclaimed by Disney, or is that did they take a straw poll? How do we know that this is in fact the happiest place on earth? Give me your room number. I'll dial up the family and let the Spatola family decide. Oh, that. Believe me, they're happy. They're having themselves a heck of a time spending all of our money. You're welcome, Walt Disney. All right. Traveling violation called. That's going to go on the big man, Josh Mbala. And you, Kermit Davis, we were, we were joking with him because if you don't laugh about it, you're going to cry about it. But they've cornered the market on knee braces. More MCL and ACL surgeries yeah. than any coach should ever have to deal with. Yeah. Sienna the ball, down one. It's been a back and forth contest and Javian McCollum continues his MVP caliber tournament. You know, sometimes Rich, as McCollum hobbles off, which is absolutely something to keep an eye on, it, you know, look, I, I played at Army. I, I played at a, at a low major. And so, you know, you line up against these, these Power 5 schools. Yesterday it was an ACC school. Today it's an SEC school. It, these are the games to get after it if you're a JV and McCollum. These are when you can really make a name for yourself. And, and he has certainly done that in a game and a half. Abram corrals it, a fresh 20 for Ole Miss. Coming up on two minutes to go in the first half. A competitive one here in the first semifinal. That one picked off by Playtech. Here's Billups. Mm. Met at the rim by three white jerseys, and Jared Billups goes down hard and will be slow to get up. What a take. Jared Billups, who is a warrior, goes to the rim, and the defenders, they went to Jared. The Galleria of Jewelry. <laughs> yeah, we were talking to Carmen Massarello about Jared Billups. He's their warrior. He's their best perimeter defender. Usually guards the other team's best player. I guess he's a distant cousin to yes, Chauncey. He is. And I, I said to Carmen, I go, so is he like, is he a, a, a blood cousin distant or is it like he's my cousin? Right. Like bro. Hey bro. Like my bro. That's right. my cousin. No, they are related. Yeah. Chauncey now the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. And McCollum's back on the bench and maybe staying off the bench to keep that ankle nice and warm. Did you ever deal with an ankle when you were playing? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. And they just, of course, my ankles are so thin, my uh, trainer said, <laughs> you need to tape your ankles to just walk across the street. <laughs> Three points for Billups. It's a two-point Sienna lead. The upstart Saints looking to punch their ticket to the ESPN Events Invitational Championship game Sunday. Five on the shot clock. Good ball movement 
But a good closeout by Sienna. Very good. That ball tipped out of bounds. Aggressive defense by Kermit Davis and the Rebels. But Sienna will maintain possession as Jackson Stormo comes back on. And McCollum back on the floor as well for the final 119 in this first half. Stormo. Patient, and it pays off. And that's maximum use of the pivot foot. And Ole Miss, when that ball gets below the foul line, they, they go from their 1-3-1 one, one to man. And a nice job adjusting by Sienna. An 8-2 Sienna run. Quelled by the first three of the game and the first points of the game for Amari Abram, who had 26 yesterday. 12-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. 20 seconds to go in the clock. Here's Billups. Bounce pass. Stormo. Off the back iron. Rebounded by White. And now the shot clock is off. Last shot time for Kermit Davis's boys. Stolen away by McCollum. A little lackadaisical effort by the freshman Amari Abram. Gives Sienna one more shot before they head to the locker room. McCollum threw it away. Well, a back and forth Ooh. contest in this one. Catch your breath, folks. Sienna 27, Ole Miss 26 in the first of two semifinals from Walt Disney World's Wide World of Sports and the State Farm Fieldhouse. Sienna with a one-point lead after their quarterfinal blowout of the Florida State Seminoles by 17. They're going to have to play a strong 20 minutes if they want to advance and continue this Cinderella run through this Invitational. When we come back, it's the halftime report. Sienna and Ole Miss toe-to-toe -to -toe in the semifinals. From the happiest place on earth. Time at the Wide World of Sports at the Walt Disney World Resort. The Siena Saints of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference lead the SEC's Old Man. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, as we welcome you back to the ESPN Events Invitational. Jackson Stormo and the Siena Saints have a one-point lead over the Ole Miss Rebels. 27-26, your score as we get set to start the second half. Two ties and 10 lead changes in this first of two semifinals from inside the State Farm Fieldhouse. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Alongside Chris Batola, I'm Rich Hollenberg. The Siena Saints are the upstarts of this ESPN Events Invitational, looking for a second straight Power 5 win. How have they done it in this first half? Well, they've had the two best players on the floor, Javian McCollum and Jackson Stormo. Those two guys combined for 19 points in the first half, and it's really been the high pick and roll. Uh, McCollum's got five assists, and it's this high screen roll. It has not been defended well by Ole Miss. They tried to switch it there, just a miscommunication. McCollum has broken down that defense, gotten into the paint, created shots mostly for Stormo, but for other, other guys. He's been dynamic. So Sienna, the two best players in this game so far. And then for Ole Miss, they've had a hard time scoring, and they've had to manufacture points on the offensive glass or off of turnovers. They are one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. They've got eight offensive rebounds in this game. The conversion has not been great. Only four points off of those, so they've got to do a better job finishing around the rim and then points off of turnovers. The fact of the matter, Rich, is Ole Miss has to get Matthew Morrell going. He was averaging 17 points a game coming into this tournament. He's now three of 15 from the field and three halves of basketball. There's a look at your first half stats. Nothing really jumps out at you. I mean, Sienna didn't light the world on fire offensively. They were only two for six from three. They came in 18th in the nation in three-point percentage at a 41% clip. But credit the Sienna defense, lowest scoring half this year for the undefeated Ole Miss Rebels. 
Louisiana starts off with the basketball. And they're starting Michael Bear in the first five. Number 24 for Siena. He's got the ball, gives it up to Billups. 10 on the shot clock. Billups spins and tosses it out of bounds. You know, so much of what Siena will do, they might have an early set. You know, it's, a, it's been a lot of that horn stuff against the man, but it's just drive and kick. And there, Ole Miss did a nice job staying in front of the ball, guarding those crossing actions, keeping the ball out of the paint. Ole Miss goes inside to start the second half, and Javius McInnes has his second bucket of the game. McInnes was a big energy giver to the Rebels in their quarterfinal win against Stanford yesterday. Here's Playtech. Career high 20 against Florida State. Comes up empty on that layup attempt. Up ahead, Abram stops and pops for three. He had a quiet first half after a big day yesterday with 26. And a good time out there by Carmen Massarello. Ole Miss has come out of the locker room ready to defend. And a nice job scoring early in the possession there. 18.44 to go. Ole Miss with the four-point lead jumping out in the second half. Javius McKinnis and Amari Abram combined for 41 in Ole Miss's win against Stanford yesterday. And they get started early here in the second half, just punching it inside there to McKinnis off a defensive stop. And then another defensive stop leading to a quick bucket here from Abram in transition. It, it starts with their defense, Rich. And I thought they were energized to start. And Siena a little bit of sleep here to start the second half. There's Amari Abram, high scorer in the quarterfinals with 26 points. And I noticed when we were in the Siena locker room talking to Coach Massarello, the first thing on the whiteboard as far as scouting Ole Miss was Amari Abram is a left-hander. Not much you can do when he's hitting three-pointers, though. Here's Billups guard by Abram. A 1v1 matchup. 10 on the shot clock. Stormo had 10 in the first half. Comes up short on that one, but gets his own rebound. Here's Bear. Set shot for three. And a nice job by Bear finding the three-point line. He saw that Stormo was corralling the offensive rebound. He just ran to the line. And that's usually what the Ole Miss Rebels do. Sixth in the nation in offensive rebounds, but Siena got one of their own there. McKinnis. Now Abram, checked by McCollum. Good recovery by Stormo. Two to shoot. Breakfield forces one up, and an offensive rebound. What a rebound. Outside of his area. Uh-oh. Javon McCollum lost a sneaker, and Amari Abram makes him pay. These guards are setting up to get after one another. And I guarantee you Kermit Davis challenged his backcourt at halftime. We have got to do a better job on Javon McCollum. He's just been able to dance around in the first half. Amari Abram, three for three from three this afternoon. Seven for 14 on the season so far for Abram. There's a tip. And McCollum picks it up. Double digits for JV and McCollum with 11. Spot up three. Too Look much. out if Matthew Morrell gets on track. Too, too much time and space. And Playtech turned around to Kermit Davis as if to say, you got in my way. McKinnis with a hand on defense, knocking it out of bounds. Let's take a look at that. And Morrell just coming off a, a pin down. 
And I, I don't know who, what Playtech was talking about. He turned around to the bench and said something. McCollum, short on that one. Abram in transition. Calls his own number and the torch is lit. Eight second half points already in the first four minutes for Amari Abram. You've got to be able to corral him early because if he can get this deep, he's very good in the mid-range. I mean, he's knocking down threes, but this is where he did a lot of his damage yesterday. He's really a mid-range savant when he gets to his spot, and you, you've got to be able to stop the basketball early than, earlier than that, Rich, because if, if you allow him to get that deep, he's really a tough scorer. Amari Abram, an ESPN top 100 recruit for Kermit Davis, part of the number 12 incoming class, so says our guru, Paul Biancardi, and Amari Abrams had a coming out party here at Disney World. <laughs> Phillips, good hands by Abram on defense. Stormo, and the follow by Phillips. Good poise by Billups when he got into the paint. He got the ball knocked away. He didn't panic. And Stormo doing a nice job holding his position to be a receiver. Five points, five rebounds for Jared Billups. Nice look. And Miles Burns has a chance at a three-point play. But credit Javius McKinnis for the pretty wraparound assist. It was even better cut. Or just a heads-up cut. Cutting to score by Miles Burns, and, and like you said, Rich, a, a, a good find and a good feed. But just a nice job. His guy comes over to help, and Burns cuts right there to the heart of the paint. Good finish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. It's been a fun ESPN Events Invitational. Day one headline, Siena upsetting Florida State. We talked about Amari Abrams with his Invitational high 26 points. The Groves brothers for the Sooners combined for 33. But the biggest buzz was in the nightcap. Seton Hall down to Memphis and one shot to go, Chris. Tyree Samuel, the senior for Seton Hall. He just... So pops up there, one dribble, and then glass. I mean, what a way to finish that game. And this, you know, defensively, you could probably be a little bit more aggressive, but you don't want to foul, especially against a guy like Samuel. What a shot. And then uh, you're lucky he didn't get him hurt in the dog pile. And, of course, Shaheen Holloway, the first-year head coach for his alma mater, Seton Hall. And a lot of people from Siena were watching that game very closely because, of course, St. Peter's in the MAC. They're very familiar with Coach Holloway. Ole Miss has its largest lead, eight points, 42-34 over Siena as Burns completes the three-point play. There's Gribben, almost turned it over. McCollum found himself all alone, maybe two all alone. Rim the dunk attempt and he went down hard. The foul is going to go on Killian Gribben, but the field house has gone silent after that big fall. I'll tell you what, man, that's how you attack the rim. I mean, it's off a turnover again, just a turnover issue for Siena, and my word, what an athlete. Well, Miles Burns, a guy, Rich, he, he you know, played at NA, NAIA Loyola, Loyola, New Orleans, scored over 1,800 points there, over 1,000 rebounds. He won a national championship, and he's really fit in well. I mean, he's a terrific athlete, as you saw in that last play. Yeah. Coming into the tournament, he had 12 offensive rebounds in four games. Just a kind of a nice little role guy who gives you athleticism and, and physicality. And again, one of those defensive guys that 
Kermit Davis was looking for in the transfer portal. I did not know this, but there is a Marcus Haynes Award given out in college basketball for the college player at any level who has the most steals in a season. Miles Burns won that award last year. He goes one for two from the line. Also a renaissance man, like you are, Chris Patola. Thank you. Tickles the ivories, does Miles Burns. Played some piano here at Disney World in front of Mickey Mouse and company. And he continues the Ole Miss run in the second half. They're on the mid in the midst of a 12-4 spurt now. Ten on the shot clock. McCollum. Easy three for Javian McCollum. Yeah, he's really the only scorer out there with Jackson Stormo on the bench and Andrew Playtech, who has not played well, also on the bench. Where do your points come from? A heavy burden here on McCollum. Check that. That was a two by McCollum, so he has 13. And there's Matthew Morrell chipping in with another two. Morrell's had a better second half so far. Nine points for him, and the lead is nine for the Rebels. Again, they run that for a three, and Morrell does a nice job letting the play, you know, take place, and he comes off that screen to his left hand, and a, a tough finish there. Again, he's not a great driver. He's a straight-line driver. He's a good athlete. Six minutes gone by in the second half. Eight on the shot clock. Play Tech misses the bunny. Breakfield. Ooh. Take that, Sienna Saints. Jamin Breakfield with the throwdown. Let's go! We got another technical foul for a guy coming on the floor. And, and I'm down with this. Like, I am here for this technical. I'm sorry. You know, your bench has to be more disciplined. I mean, this is a fantastic play. Not to take some juice off of this. I mean, what a nice job going to his right hand. He is a lefty. So he f punches that one home with his right hand. And then again, the bench just overreacts, comes onto the floor. And you get that Class B technical foul. And McCollum adds to his numbers. 14 for Javian McCollum. It reminds me a few years ago, Monmouth was here representing the MAC, and they had the bench mob. Yeah. Remember they were doing all those coordinated celebrations? Everyone loved it, and then the officials were like, we don't love it so much. Tone it down. This may be the first game, though, I've, I've done where there were a technical ca called on each bench yeah. for over-celebrating. You and me both. Here's McCullough weaving his way through the Ole Miss defense. Gets to the rim and gets the foul. He has shown out in this tournament. And this is a guy who had to take four weeks off during the summer and still has really made a, just a monster jump from his freshman to sophomore year. And as we've said, he, he's not big, but he's just, he, he plays bigger than his size. He's only about six feet, 160 pounds, so pretty slight, but really shifty. Carmen Massarello gives him a, a ton of freedom within their offense. Look at those numbers, backing up a sensational quarterfinal performance against FSU. This is a high major kid, man. Playing against high major competition, he is showing out at Disney World. And a reliable free throw shooter at that, 86% on the season. He's perfect from the free throw line today. Abram lobs it up, and Akuba finishes. And a nice catch and adjustment. And once again, Abram breaking down the defense, getting into that the middle of that paint and making a play. Largest lead of the game for the Rebels is 10, 49-39. Picked off, playing up the line, Breakfield tried for another highlight dunk and missed it that time.
Good transition defense by the Saints. And Gribben gives it right back to him. If you fill the lane, you keep running, McCollum's going to find you. Because everybody starts to watch McCollum with the basketball. Sixth assist for Javian McCollum. And Brakefield says, I'll give you your two-handed dunk, and I'll take a three ball. 11 for Brakefield. Offense is starting to come alive a little bit in the second half. McCollum. whoop de doo Javian McCollum making it look easy. And right back at you, Amari Abram has 13. And J.B. McCollum looks gassed, and I can't say I blame him. Here's Playtech, the float game. Sienna's going to need Playtech to get involved in this game, to be a willing participant. Because J.B. McCollum can't do it all himself. What a guard battle we have going here by the two young guards. The freshman Amari Abram from Ole Miss and J.V. and McCollum, the sophomore. Ooh! Just dancing on folks. Little drop dime there to Kelly and Gribben. And then Miles Burns thought he was going to pick him up at half court. And the blow by J.V. and McCollum, delicious. The holidays are here, and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrapped savings for your next Chevy. Get year-end savings now. Equinox, just $3.99 a month. Yes, $3.99 a month. So come join the family and thank DePaula for great year-end savings. What if your vehicle could sense your presence, feel your touch, and come to life with the simple press of a button? Now it can. An experience so responsive, all of your senses are heightened. Plug into your senses in the first ever all-electric Genesis GV60. Drive into the future of electrified mobility at Garvey Genesis. All electric, all luxury. What? what? Daily time limits let parents help teens spend time on Instagram more intentionally. Explore more than 30 tools that can help teens have a positive experience on our platform. We've got a fun one here in the semifinals. They were certainly fun in the semifinals down at the Bahamas. Kansas needed a buzzer-beating tip-in to win over Wisconsin, 69-68. And it took overtime for 22nd-ranked Tennessee to get past Andy Enfield and the USC Trojans. So it sets up a USC-Wisconsin third-place game, which is coming up shortly. And then, of course, the championship game feels like a, an Elite Eight type of a game come yeah. March. Yeah, it sure does. How about that? How about ha winning that game the way Kansas did over Wisconsin? Yeah. I mean, I Wisconsin did everything you're supposed to do on that final possession, and you just get beat on a, not even an offensive rebound, like a circus yeah. offensive rebound. Here at Disney World, the Ole Miss Rebels offense has found its footing. They had 26 points in the entire first half. They already have surpassed that with 11 and a half minutes to go in this game. What's been the difference, Chris? It's been the guards, really for both teams, but in, in, this, in Ole Miss's case, it's Amari Abram just getting into the lane, attacking. They've got some stuff in transition, the big dunk there from Brakefield. And a foul goes the other way. That's going to go on Jared Billups. Morell checked by Billups. Rises up and knocks it down, and that is Matthew Morell. He can get it going, and that's what he wants to do. If he if he puts it on the floor, he's not necessarily looking to take it all the way to the rim. He's looking to pull up to get to that J. Playing up the line again, another steal by Brakefield. 
And he puts it in in transition. We've seen too many of those turnovers on that reversal pass. Just leading to a pick six for Ole Miss. Ole Miss sports fans trying to wipe the bad taste out of their mouths from yesterday's loss in the Egg Bowl to Mississippi State in Oxford. Watching to see if their Ole Miss basketball boys could take it all the way to the title game here in Orlando. Right now they're up 13 on Siena. Well, it was the 119th Egg Bowl, and it was raining and a mess, and Ole Miss definitely had their opportunities, but they come up short by just two points against their in-state rivals. We were talking to the Ole Miss staff coming in, and they said, uh, and Lane Kiffin's staying. <laughs> yeah. For now. Right. For now. There's some of the Ole Miss faithful who've made the trip down to Disney World to cheer on their squad, who is 5-0 coming into this game, looking to go 6-0. It's been nine years since the Rebels have started this well for a college basketball season. Brakefield working on Bear. And he's feeling it. Little shot put up off the window for Jamin Brakefield. He is 15. He has shown you the full arsenal, too. Yeah. He has done it all over the place. Balance scoring for the Rebels. Three in double digits. Billups. And Brakefield the rebound. Jamin Brakefield, 15 points, five boards today. Caldwell, pull up. Morrell left alone. Too strong. Offensive rebound, Akuba. And this is where Rich, Sienna's done a nice job, at least in the first half, did a nice job defensively. Ole Miss had eight offensive rebounds, but they, Sienna didn't get hurt by it. This is where the athletes in the depth of Ole Miss, you, you start to feel it taking over. You sense a little fatigue, second day in a row for Sienna, second game in a row, I should say, where the fatigue is starting to impact. And the entry pass floated a little high, picked off by the Saints. Zach Tekken, backup point guard, brings it up. Here's Billups. Threw it to the Ole Miss defense. And with no McCollum on the floor for Siena, that, that's a problem offensively. Yeah. No McCollum, no Jackson Stormo. Those are the two best players in the first half for Carmen Massarella. And McCollum coming back in. And I think part of that fatigue I'm talking about, Carmen Massarello just trying to, you know, save some legs for the, for the latter stretch of this game. But you're down 13. I mean, this is a breaking point. This was the first time all season that the Ole Miss Rebels trailed at the half, and they have responded in the second half. Down by one at the break, and now they're up 13 with 8.23 to go against Siena. Nice job there by Bear blocking it without fouling. <laughs> How about Brakefield catching it from the seat of his pants? Michael Bear, a former walk-on at Iowa, played there along with his brother, Nicholas, who's a teammate of Player of the Year, Luca Garza, yeah. when he was in the Big Ten. Here's the lob. It's snuffed out by the Saints, but a foul is called. That's going to go on Ely. You know, Kuba's got good size. He's really the size on this team. A nice under out of bounds set play there to, to, to go for the lob. But Kuba, a guy who, who only played two years of varsity basketball, so he's really young to the game. Played two seasons at Portland, transferred to Louisiana, played two seasons there. 
And now part of that rotating cast of, of big guys that Kermit Davis has. Yeah. And he fits that mold that Kermit was looking for two years ago with Louisiana. He was the only player in the nation in the top ten in offensive rebounds and blocks. Mm. Akuba one for two. He has five. And the lead is up to 14 for Ole Miss, their largest of the afternoon. Here's Kellier. And Jordan Kellier comes up lame. He might have rolled an ankle. Ole Miss done a nice job converging on penetration. And yeah, just a little tweak there. If this were football and an injury, we'd be going to commercial break right. at this point. He'd uh, be going into the blue tent right, right now. <laughs> of course. So Kellier goes to the bench. So Jared Billups goes to the line because Kermit Davis, since Kellier went to the bench, Kermit Davis allowed to pick somebody from the floor to shoot those free throws, and uh, he picks the guy who's shooting 54% yes. on the year. That's good scouting work by the Ole Miss Rebels. Kermit's no dummy. He's won a lot of games. Four hundred seventy-two in his career, twenty-five plus years as a head man, Kermit Davis, and he might have his best Ole Miss team when it's all said and done in his tenure in Oxford. Stormo back on the floor, and he rolls that one in. A dozen for Jackson Stormo matches his season high. Here's Brakefield, top of the key. And now Morrell. Abram falling away from the basket. Tough shot. Rebounded by Stormer. Here's McCollum. See if he can continue to work his magic. Ely, pull up. Got it. Ely. Pretty smooth from the freshman. Yeah, he's talented. He's got a really bright future. Really a good athlete. And Kermit Davis calls a timeout. Two timeouts remaining for Kermit Davis and the Rebels. Two remaining for the Siena Saints. It's a nine-point game with under seven minutes to go. From the Magic Kingdom. The holidays are here, and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrapped savings for your next Chevy. Get year-end savings now. Equinox, just $3.99 a month. Yes, $3.99 a month. So come join the family and thank DePaula for great year-end savings. Supervision tools like those found on Family Center can help parents keep their teens safe on Instagram. With these tools, parents can see who their teen follows, who follows them, how much time they spend on Instagram, and any reports their teen shares. So parents have an assist when it comes to supporting their teens on Instagram. Learn more about Family Center and other tools to help teens have a positive experience on Instagram. Seems fine to me. Yeah, exactly. Dad, right. how big is the ocean? Let me call you back. That is a really good question. Adventure awaits in the ruggedly luxurious Genesis GV80. Get yours at Garvey Genesis. Nine-point Ole Miss lead with 6.56 to go alongside Chris Patola, Rich Hollenberg on hand, the ESPN Events Invitational Semifinal. 
And that lead for the Ole Miss Rebels, Chris, due in large part to the fact that in the second half, they're shooting 64% from the field and four for seven from yeah. behind the arc. Well, it's no secret Amari Abram has been very good in this second half, and, and their performance offensively has come along with the freshman's play. You know, obviously a big, big part of why they won that game yesterday was his play. Here's Abram with the ball, guarded by Billups. Best on-ball defender that Carmen Massarello has, and now they switch. Oh, they're in a 2-3 zone out of the timeout. Trying to quiet down some of that shooting or that penetration. Four on the clock. Abram lost the handle. Rebound, but McKinnis was too late. A shot clock violation. I guess the zone worked. Yeah, you know, what's been hurting them has been that, that high screen roll, that roll and replace that Ole Miss has been running. It hasn't been all that intricate, but Abram has been dynamic out of it. And when you come out in a zone, you, you can't necessarily run that, that same action. And it stood Ole Miss up. And now Andrew Playtech back on the floor. They're going to need a little offense from him if they're going to come from a nine-point lead for Ole Miss. McCollum. Saints looking to drive like they did yesterday, but the Ole Miss defense is up to the task. It's tipped out of bounds. Doug Sermon says it'll be Ole Miss basketball. You know, and, and Ole Miss has done a much better job in the second half against Siena's screen roll. Remember how many rolls Jackson Stormo caught from McCollum in that first half. That tag guy on the opposite side has done a much better job coming over to take away Stormo on the roll. Morrell showed three, pull up two, no. Another chance for the Saints. McCollum. Another three for JV and McCollum, his third triple of the afternoon, and he has 21. An 8-0 Sienna run has him right back in this game. Inside out, Burns, no, the rebound to Playtech. Here's McCollum. Oh, he had Stormo. Ten to shoot for the Saints. Phillips. Up against the defense, and the foul is going to be called on Jamin Brakefield. It's a good call. He's not there. And a good drive by Billups, who's done a nice job attacking the rim today. You know, he's not really a perimeter shooter. He's He's been beat up. It's not the first time he's gone down hard. And something's wrong with Jared Billups. Not exactly sure what. Could be he's 54% from the foul line. No, he's he's been beat up today, man. I, I'm telling you, he's gone to the he's gone to the rim hard and con, come down hard a number of times. Well, he keeps bending over at the waist, but it looks like he's grabbing his left arm. Or his right arm, rather. It's the second time yeah. Kermit Davis has had to pick the free throw shooter. So it's going to be Jackson Stormo, a 77% free throw shooter. Stormo has made 10 of his 13 attempts this season. That one's good. Baker's dozen for Stormo. And now Michael Ely and 
Michael Baer, both set to check in for Carmen Massarella. One for two for Stormo, another rebound for Breakfield. A 9-0 Sienna run. Nice cut, nice finish by Matthew Morrell. And a nice response by Ole Miss. Good cut by Morrell, and he shows you his athleticism. Here's McCollum. Takeover time. They wave it off. Foul's going to be on the floor. And Kermit Davis is apoplectic. And I think he thinks McCollum's pushing off. The, the reality is he got fouled twice. I mean, they called the one at the end there, and, and as he's coming out to catch the ball, he got fouled as well. I mean, they're being real physical, as you would imagine, with McCollum. Play tech inside. Ely rejected by McInnes. What a block. Among active D1 players, Javius McInnes, fourth in career blocks. Left hand, Abram, check the scouting report. 15 for Abram. McCollum. And Abram grabs the rebound amongst the bigs. And we have our final media timeout of this first semifinal. What a second half Amari Abrams had, and you said it, Rich. KYP, know your personnel. He goes left, really left. you got to get up on that hand, man. The holidays are here, and we think of our customers as friends. So DePaula has unwrap savings for your next Chevy. Get year-end savings now. Silverado, just $4.39 a month. Yes, $4.39 a month. So come join the family and thank DePaula for great year-end savings. What if your vehicle could sense your presence, feel your touch, and come to life with a simple press of a button? Now it can. An experience so responsive, all of your senses are heightened. Plug into your senses in the first ever all-electric Genesis GV60. Drive into the future of electrified mobility at Garvey Genesis. All electric, all luxury. What? what? Daily time limits let parents help teens spend time on Instagram more intentionally. Explore more than 30 tools that can help teens have a positive experience on our platform. See Matthew Morrell come alive here in the second half, an all-SEC player. He was 3 of 15 in three halves in this tournament. He's 4 of 7 in this second half, and he's, he's hit a couple threes, finishing at the rim. They need this guy, as well as Amari Abram has played. He, he's still a freshman. They've got a lot of other pieces who have shown flashes, but Matthew Morrell is their guy, and he's shown you that here in the second half. And just to put a number to that point that you just made in terms of plus minus no one's higher in the plus category today for Ole Miss than Matthew Morrell they're plus 15 when he's on the floor points or not they need him in that rotation today he's got 13 and a lot of times guy rich guys who are struggling and guys who should be scoring it can become volume guys and, and really you know shot selection becomes an issue he hasn't forced it I mean he's allowed yeah. the game to come to him and he started to see the ball go in. And that's a traveling violation. Called on Jamin Brakefield. That's the 15th Ole Miss turnover. Chance for one last push for the Siena Saints, the upstarts from the MAC. Looking for back-to-back -back upsets of Power 5 teams, but they're down by nine. Three and a half to go. Morell kicks it out. Breakfield, too strong. And it's chased down by Jared Billups. Three minutes to go in the semifinals.
Phillips. Rebounded by McKinnis. And a foul called on Michael Bear. So Ole Miss is in the bonus. They'll be shooting free throws every subsequent foul. McKinnis will step to the line for the first time this afternoon. I don't get that foul. I mean, you're certainly not at a point yet where you have to do that. You know, McKinnis, I don't know. You allow him walk, to walk down 90 feet to take free throws. McKinnis just two for six from the free throw line this season. Make it two for seven, he misses the front end. Still plenty of time for JV and McCollum and company. Playtech looking for an open look, but nothing coming. Good defense by the Rebels. Miles Burns, hello. They have shot that gap. Wing to top of key. They have shot that gap and turned it over so many times in this game. Now we're counting down to two minutes left. Number two with a big three. A career high 24 now for Javian McCollum. You know, this reversal pass is, is a dangerous play, and you have a big guy in Stormo handling it up top there and just lazy and careless. And we've seen that run out finishing in a dunk a number of times today for Ole Miss. The other thing we've seen a number of times today is this guy just making a play on his own. You know, you got to be up on that if you're Javius McKinnis. But, but regardless, Javian McCollum has put this team on his back and has carried a real heavy load, especially with Andrew Playtech, who's been a non-factor. And Jackson Stormo had a nice first half. He has not been nearly as effective in the second. McCollum coming off a career-high eight-assist game against the Florida State Seminoles. Now chipping in in this one against Ole Miss with a career-high 24. He's got four triples. He's had the ball on a string for most of this game. But it's Ole Miss who leads 67-59 with 2.02 to go. Siena with one timeout remaining and the possession arrow. Ole Miss has two timeouts remaining and they're in the bonus. Full court pressure by Siena. Burns trapped in the corner. And a good job dealing with that full court pressure. Breakfield, got it. 17 for Breakfield. He's had a really nice two days. Yeah. 17 and 7 today. And yesterday he went for 17 and 8 against Stanford. And now the fouls have to come. Fast and frequently. That's the fourth on Bear. Ole Miss from the free throw line coming into this contest, 67% as a team. They hit a couple more in this next minute and a half, and they will have punched their ticket to the championship game. Abram Good on his first free throw attempt of the afternoon. He has 16. Make it 17 for the freshman Abram. It's got to feel good for Kermit Davis to know Deshaun Ruffin is on his way back. You have Matthew Morrell, and now you have another scoring option in the backcourt in the freshman Abram. Here's Playtech. Shot fake, step back. Loose ball, chased down by Burns. 
Here comes McCullough. Oh, what what an effort by Miles Burns. He's a go hard guy, man. He really is. I, I really like this Miles Burns. Just a winner. I mean, this is a winning play. A guy who never stops playing hard. What a play. You know, you mentioned Ruffin coming back and what you do. Like, that is going to be a question about how you can play Deshaun Ruffin, Amari Abram together. I mean, you know, as well as Abram has played, you're going to want him on the floor. It, it, it is going to be an interesting, and it's a good problem to have, but right. it will be an interesting question. Some high-level problems facing Kermit Davis and company as they're a minute and six seconds away from a trip to the title game here at the Walt Disney World Resort. Early season's been a, a struggle for Kermit Davis and the Ole Miss Rebels in the last few years. They've gotten their season off to slow starts and always playing catch-up. Not the case this season. They're 5-0 and coming in for the first time in nine years and looking to make it 6-0 and with a win here against Siena. And as if Jamie and McCollum can't do any more, he's wiping up the floor as well. Points, assists, and some towel duty for number two. Well, these towel guys have to take more pride in their job. You don't allow, don't allow JV and McCollum to do right. this. Say, hey, we got this. Have some pride. We gotta hold everybody accountable, Rich. Even the moppers, even the <laughs> towel people. Well, easy for us to say with hindsight being 2020, but preseason number nine for Kermit Davis and company sounds a little conservative. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Especially when you see what has happened in the SEC in the early part of the season. All those teams at the top of the list have taken L's. Now, some of them have been to very good teams, but Florida, preseason number seven, they lost to Florida Atlantic. Look, you're operating under the presumption that preseason polls tell us anything. anything. They are stupid. <laughs> The reality is they're even more stupid in this now, you know, era of college basketball where there's a lot of unknowns about Ole Miss coming into the year. I mean, you didn't know Mari Abram was going to play as well as he has. The, the transfers we've talked about, there's just a lot of unknowns about Ole Miss coming in. Time is of the essence for the Saints. They got a foul. And they do, but precious seconds ticking by. That's going to go on Gribben. Got to like this Ole Miss roster makeup, too. They, they have a lot of new faces, but new faces from old places so they're not necessarily right. young albeit maybe new to kermit davis and the old miss system they've shown some good composure here in the second half so now it's 19 for abram after a 26 point outburst in the quarterfinals Phillips saves it to Ely. And Carmen Massarello telling his team not to foul. You know, they just ran into a more athletic, deeper team here today. A better team, but, but you know... Siena showed out yesterday, pounded a Florida State team that's obviously reeling, but nonetheless, it was a good win, a good showing. They got a special player in JV McCollum. They really do. He's going to be a problem for MAC teams this year. Uh, Andrew Playtech did not play well today, but he's been one of the hottest shooters in the country. Uh, and Jackson Sumo is just solid. So, you know, you were talking about Ole Miss's nucleus. I, I think Sienna's got a nice little foundation here for, for their year. If they can get a Michael Ely, the freshman, to come along progressively and then continue to grow that bench who played so well for them yesterday, I think Sienna's got, you got to be optimistic about the year. Yeah. Not a lot expected of them either. Preseason sixth 
in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Will you, will you stop conference. with the preseason <laughs> polls? Will you stop with those? Enough. Uh. All I'm doing is proving your point. Phillips off the mark, and Amari Abram and company will be able to dribble it out. So, the Cinderella slipper is off the foot of the Siena Saints. One power five win yesterday, but they can't back it up today. A tremendous effort by the Ole Miss Rebels, trailing by one at the half. They outscore Siena by 13 in the second half to advance to the ESPN Events Invitational Championship game on Sunday. They'll await the winner of Oklahoma and Seton Hall, which is coming up later tonight from the Disney Wide World of Sports. Here's a look at your updated bracket. What impressed you most about the Rebels? Their second half, Rich, you know, they came out and it took it right to Siena. I thought they made some nice defensive adjustments. They got Matthew Morrell going and uh, you know, and I think an unsung guy here, we've talked about Amari, is Jamin Brakefield. He's put two two games together. Today he goes for 17 and 7. He's just a really unique player. So a really solid second half. Ole Miss advances to the ESPN Events Invitational Championship game. For Chris Patola and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Rich Hollenberg. Thanks so much for watching. Our final score, once again, from the State Farm Fieldhouse, Ole Miss wins it by a dozen, 74-62 over Seattle. With that, we send things back to the studio. Zubin Mahenti, Seth Greenberg, and Steve Wojciechowski from the studio. Fellas, take it away. And we will take it away.